Good morning from Singapore. Yesterday we got to see a lot of the Marina Bay, which was really cool. And now we are going to check out some other parts of the city. We don't really have that many expectations for today, but we are walking towards Little India. So let's see what it brings. to Little India without stopping for some masala chai and to be honest had we not had Indian food last night we likely would have stopped here for lunch as well because there are a ton of restaurants serving what looks to be delicious food at reasonable prices. Aside from just food then there seems to be a plethora of different stalls that are very very similar to the ones that we've seen in other Little Indias. So you're looking at clothing, jewelry and also electronics it all seems to be phenomenally cheap prices so if you find yourself at a loose end on your travels and you happen to be in Singapore then maybe this is a place to stop by. Another cool thing which we didn't go into because we've seen so many similar things is that they do have quite a large Hindu temple so if you want to get your culture on then you can also do that as well. We've now come to a slightly different area of the city. There was some debate about how to pronounce this. Is it bougie? Bugus? <laughs> Bougious? Budgie? According to Google and YouTube, it seems to be Bugus. And so that's where we are. This is seemingly an amazing marketplace where you can get a lot of cheap stuff, including food. So excited to explore it. It looks so simple as a dish, 
but due to the fact it's just soaked in this broth for such a long time, it's absolutely packed full of flavor. This is delicious. Definitely try this. We're just walking back to our hotel after what was a delicious lunch. That all cost $11. And I'm so glad that I got to try the fried carrot cake because it was really an experience to get authentic Singapore food. Absolutely, and that chicken rice was worth the hype because I had heard nothing but great things and honestly it was delicious. So the very fact that you can basically have a hawker experience in Singapore in the same way that you would have in a number of other places, then it's really great. Because everybody says Singapore is expensive, and they are right. Like, if you go to most parts of the city, then 100% very expensive. But in little pockets, if you know where to go, you can eat pretty cheaply. It's great. And it's definitely worth it to go to Buddhist Market just because it is a happening place. It is three levels and you could get your nails done there, although it's crazy expensive. Like we're talking 80 to $100. And then they have all kinds of like fashion and accessories and tech, actually pretty similar to the types of things we saw in Little India, except for this was way busier and more centralized. And then the fact that there's like the hawker market right beside it. This is the place that if you have some extra time, I would highly recommend you come here because I feel like you get a really local experience. It was a lot of fun. But now we're gonna head back because we've got to get prepared for something pretty special. We came back to the hostel and hopefully you can tell that we've got ourselves all dressed up. So it's now time to head to that special thing we have planned. currently in the washroom of 67 Pall Mall, Singapore, and these are absolutely luxurious, just like the rest of it. My uncle is a member of 67 Pall Mall in London, and he kindly arranged for Nick and I to come here and be his guests. It is a wine club, and we have just had the most amazing time. We tried four different wines, and they were all fantastic, and this is definitely not how we typically live. This was a definite treat. So a big thank you to my uncle Ian for making this happen. I also wanted to take an opportunity to thank Ian for that. That was a legitimate treat. Very, very unique. We definitely wouldn't have had it otherwise. Lovely way to spend the first part of the evening. So thanks again, Ian. The reason we didn't film in there is because it felt like a very private and exclusive place in one. We kind of didn't feel like we belonged there, first of all. But also we just didn't feel like we wanted to draw too much attention to ourselves. Because we were guests, or and I would never want to do anything to jeopardize my uncle's membership. That's kind of the main reason why. But I hope from the images from the bar, when we were just you know, enjoying our wine, that at least you can see is a very plush place and we've thoroughly enjoyed our time. Yeah, it's a special, special location. But now we are headed back to a place that we have already visited, if you've seen our previous video. So, off we go. think of that babe awesome thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it if you're gonna be in Singapore by night then what are you doing if you're not going and seeing that it was so good absolutely phenomenal and super romantic yeah it was awesome I yeah. loved the music that it was set to definitely glad that we set an evening aside to do that and it would have been nice if we'd been able to cuddle instead of film but you know we're dedicated to youtube exactly you're welcome <laughs> so if you're with someone special 
make sure that you just put everything down and enjoy the time with them. Incorporate it into a date night. Exactly. It's worth it. We're headed to light show number two now. Spoilers. <laughs> but yes, there's a fountain and light show just outside the Marina Bay Sands. So we are going to grab some food and then we're going to go and enjoy that. So basically you can hit up the 7.45 at Gardens by the Bay mm -hmm. and then the 9 p.m. at Marina Bay Sands. Exactly. So you can do two in one evening, you lucky devils. Having just seen the light show at Gardens by the Bay, I'm a little underwhelmed by the one here at the marina. It was nice. However, I thought that the music that they used at Gardens by the Bay, you could just jam out to it more, whereas it was all instrumental music here. And there's nothing wrong with that. It was actually very beautiful and classy but you know just a different feel to it and then the main issue is that I'm a little bit confused on where you should be watching this light and fountain show from because where we're sitting you have an amazing view of Marina Bay Sands so we were able to see the lights on the buildings absolutely perfectly but the fountains were so far away and I thought it would be more like they were in the center of the bay kind of like they were at the fountain show in Dubai but if you then stood on the other side, you'd have a great view of the fountains, but you wouldn't be able to see the light show on the buildings. It's a bit of a conundrum, that one, because also, like, you have far fewer people here. So in terms of a vantage point, then, there's second to none. But the problem is, obviously, you're not close enough to the fountains, and if you need to do that, then you need to go to the shops at Marina Bay Sands, which are just chock full of people. So it's a bit of an odd one, because it feels like no matter what happens, you can't quite win, which is bizarre. But that all said though, obviously it was kind of more of an instrumental thing, but it felt like properly orchestrated, like they really thought out the fountain arrangement with the music, like you, you could see that there was like a theme and a story to it, which was really, really nice. It just made me wonder really, what kind of a mind must you have that somebody turns around to you and says, Hey, so we're going to be building this thing and every night we're planning on doing a 15 minute light and fountain show for it. What do you need? And also, can you put this together for me so that people will happily watch this every night? What kind of a person is that amazing and that creative that they have that kind of vision? It just it blows my mind. And the same thing with the light show at the Super Tree Grove as well. That was just spec. Spectacular. It was just so good and yeah, like it's it's amazing what happens when you put the right creative mind behind any of these kinds of things. They can make something truly beautiful. Yeah, it's just the combination of the lights, the colors, the music, the sound. It's really, really gorgeous. It's a great experience. If you have to pick one though, I would go to the light show at Gardens by the Bay. Yes. And the great thing about both of these is that they're completely free. Yep, they're free and they're spaced out enough in terms of time that you don't have to choose one over the other. So you can enjoy both if you'd like to. I feel like over a 48 hour period, we've probably got one of the most comprehensive looks at this part of Singapore, and kind of the main touristy bits of Singapore that you can look out without spending thunderous amounts of cash. So if we are being completely honest with you, the only thing that we've actually spent money on here 
is food and public transportation. Yep. Nothing else. That's pretty unusual for such a huge city. Exactly. It's really testament to how they plan this city that it's easily accessible to anybody by any means of transport. It's really, really good. And it's actually quite walkable too. All in all, Singapore is a lovely place. And if you get an opportunity to do so, then you really should do it. And a lot of flights use Singapore as a stopover. So if you're able to have a 24 hour, 48 hour stopover, that is plenty and well worth it. Absolutely. But I think that's all that we've got for this video. So until the next time, take care. And keep smiling.